Hey guys, I'm in here, and today's video, um, I'm gonna do this. Talk about nature of being able to understand, stand in, stand in nature of your patterns and behaviors, because a lot of the times when you're going through the traumatic experience and can breaking out of these, these traumatic experiences, it's very important to understand the nature as to where the source is coming from and look beyond that. And it's not always easy when you're in that situation where you feel as though you have to, it's like, it's, it feels like as though you cannot break out of that cycle. And it's not true, you can. And just knowing the source of the problem and wonder why it happened. Can you do, can you break out of the cycle where you are now? Yes, you can. Is it easy? No. And I'm not going to sugarcoat anything with you guys. The reason why it's not easy is because of the fact that you will, in your subconscious, will project the same pattern. It's what you know. It's like being an autopilot constantly. And because of the hippocampus, you have all these memories that, that are stored in you. Those patterns do not change unless you come into the prefrontal cortex and really understanding, okay, I gotta be more, more conscious of what I do. Which means basically you know, your consciousness is pretty much the nature of saying, okay, I'm gonna change, do the opposite of what the other person is doing, you know? And I don't wanna say in a malicious, I don't wanna say like do it in a malicious way, but in a way that will help you to change your, change parts of yourself that you know that need to be changed. So, what I had to understand is growing up in an environment that I have grown up with, I had to really take a good look into my own life, dug, dig deep, and understand why these patterns are occurring. And the only reason why the patterns are occurring is, the, is because that is what was instilled in me in my childhood. You know, it's very simple. But so many people do not want to go deep. They subconsciously repeat the past and the present, and then they wonder why they're not getting the results they want because they're not really understanding nature as to what they're really actually creating because we all create things in a subconscious or conscious way. And a lot of people will have these belief systems are being pulled by, the, by these invisible strings by their parents, um, by their partner, whatever the case may be, and still following those patterns as though this is the right way when it's not. We're just familiar with it. And because we're familiar with it, we think that is the right way to go about it. And that's just not right at all. This is why it's so important that not to follow everybody's um, teachings. I believe that it's so important to really think for yourself and realize what really works for you and what doesn't. And it's gonna be a trial and error and no matter what, and I do believe that it's so important to really go deep and actually understand what it is that you actually believe in and not always agree with what everybody else says. Because when you go and agree with on what everybody else says, you're just being a sheep to the slaughter. And you don't want to be that. It may sound nice and gooey and all that, but in the end, who is going to be in the? Who is going to get more in trouble? You. So you have to be honestly understanding that. Okay, I have to make this a habit to break out of these cycles and patterns that was instilled in me when I was a child. I was backing up in my car. And it's so important to realize what do I actually really believe? Did everything that my parents say, are they true or are they just opinions of what I went through? Because a lot of people end up believing the fact that, that what, what their parents have said is the truth. I believe that for a long time until I realized the only way I'm going to break out of this is when I do the healing work within me. Okay. I know that I parked in the grass. So, what what you need to do? What I had to do is sit down, take a piece of paper, journal it out, take some time to yourself, and really work within yourself. Because a lot of our patterns, like I said, like I mentioned in my one of my video shorts, 
firstborns are often like their mothers. The reason is because we hang out with our mothers more. We end up picking up traits and habits like of our mothers. We end up instilling that in our in our own programming and our own mindset. And then we end up doing the same thing. Because firstborns are basically like surrogate parents. We don't have any other real examples of other real examples of what people can teach us whether right or wrong because we are just basically quote unquote guinea pigs to the parent and if the mother doesn't like it, if you have a narcissistic mother or mother with personal disorder they don't see that like as though they're the problem in the situation because they don't do the introspection you on the other hand are this is why you're watching these videos you're watching me you're watching other videos that pop up on your news feed because the fact that you have to understand the only way you're going to change is when you undo everything almost like everything that you have been taught and you change that i was taught you know the negatives this is why my mom says that i was never the good child is because she instilled these mindsets you know i was a liar you know i grew up in a family with a pathological liar i grew up in a family that was very um hard to deal with i've grown up in a fan dynamic of origin that wasn't really healthy you know and i sometimes ask my dad why did you marry my mother like it makes no sense in whatsoever and i've said this multiple times because my dad followed the same example as her, as his uh, younger brother. Therefore, when you try to do something that's similar to your siblings, you are going to get the opposite results that you really want because that's not what you really want in the end. That's not the results that you want. And then you end up wondering why you're in a marriage that, are, that you're miserable and then you're like paying the price for it. This is why I never got married. I was with a partner with similar, I, I ended up in a situation that was similar to what I went through in my own path because we are familiar with that. Whatever we're familiar with, we end up creating the same situation in our current state. So we have to be very careful with that too. We have to be very careful of what it is that we really want in our life. We have to be very careful um, in certain areas where we don't get too impulsive and where like we don't have to pay so much price of the consequences in the end. I don't, there's nothing wrong with being impulsive. It's like sometimes, like for example, innocent thing. Like if you're impulsive to like, okay, I gotta go and put my charger in my bag because I'm going out and I don't want to forget that right away. All right, do that. But like impulsive spending, that's something you gotta work on. Impulsive saying thing, whatever you want to say, that's something that can really do da more damage than good. So it's kind of like that because I have learned so much of my impulsivity from my own mother that she sees me and then she wonders why we are in the situation. She does this why a lot of people who a lot of parents with dysfunctional family of origins often discard the child who has the most characteristics that are bad because they see that within themselves but they do not want to admit that they are the ones who are the problem in the situation and these parents are the ones who have typically have issues of honestly like i said honestly like honestly looking within themselves as to why they are where we're there in the position we are. I told my parents, you know, why we're in this situation? Because things that you said in the past often create in the present and that your words have power and your words have power. You say it comes into fruition and you wonder why things are the way they are. And I've said this to multiple times with my parents too. And they look at it like, oh, that's not how it is. And this is what denial does. Denial is not seeking the truth. It's not looking at the truth for what it is. It's about projecting their own fears and patterns because the fact that they don't want to admit to it that they are wrong that's what a lot of denial does and a lot of people do live in denial because they don't want to see the facts they don't want to see the truth and how they are causing it i did the same thing too with my own son like yesterday i write promises in some ways but then in some ways i let me put it this way i still want to go out to dinner he didn't want to go out to dinner. He want he want to go for ice cream. I said, "We'll go out too." We went to go to Rita's Water Ice, um, in the next town. And then later on, we got out of the car. We went to Rita's Water Ice. I tried to keep my promise, and that. But then, he was telling me like, "Oh, he doesn't want to come." So we came home, and so and then I was like, "I was like flustered." I'm like, "No, you said you didn't want to." I read his order. You didn't want to go to dinner. We came home, and he was like, "I'm melt down at home." Like, you know, I am done. I'm done. We're this is it. I'm going to bed. I gotta go up, get up early in the morning, and I've gotta take you to the doctor's appointment, which I've completely forgot because to this morning I was like, oh shit, I forgot a doctor's appointment today. But it's just, it's just all these things, you know, and those are things that that's gonna happen in parenting, you know, that's gonna happen in life because when you're in a situation like this, like you're aware, you know, you don't wanna break promises, you don't wanna cross issues, but things happen that we have no control over 
And sometimes we just have to realize that we need to change that. We're going to have to make the transition out of that. Is it easy? No, but um, I will make sure that as a parent for myself, I would do better in my dealings with my own son and dealings with my own self because awareness is key to everything. I even told my sister the same thing in her marriage when she had a kid. If you decide to have a kid, understand the nature as to what patterns you want and what to have and what you don't because I see a lot of patterns that you do create that you are recreating in the same present situation that you've done in the past and that's not going to be healthy for your child. It's not going to be healthy for you and your relationship to your husband. And I said it straight up bluntly because you know what? It's the truth and sometimes you can't hide that shit. I know my sister doesn't like it, but I wouldn't be honest about it. She wants me to be happy and all that. That's not reality sometimes. And I'm okay, but you gotta be really honest with yourself as to what it is, the foundation of your childbearing years. What do you wanna put the foundation on? Is it gonna be easy? No, but I will not sit here and tell you this, you know, tell you something that you, you really wanna hear. I don't have time for that. I don't, I don't, I don't, and I know you don't have time for that either. So you have to be very truthful about yourself. I told this to a lot of my guy friends as to why they even got married because they come to me for a relationship advice. Or why did you get into the relationship in the first place? You know, what is it that you really were looking for in the relationship? What is it that you really want in the end? Because it's, it's just knowing if you don't know who you are, you are going to follow into a trap that will hinder you from actually getting, hinder you from actually having life that you actually want in the end because you're trapped in this situation of this old pattern mindset these patterns that is saying like okay you know what this is all i know this is how it's going to be you're familiarizing with that the only way to get out of that is to get out of your comfort zone and realizing okay this is going to be scary but i need to do this i know like as for me like you have to realize and you got to weigh the pros and cons and everything this is why in my, in my own childhood, I had to understand the nature, like, even though I couldn't change what I did in my past because I had a controlling parents, I was controlling outcome and everything. My mom's still the same way she is today. She, she doesn't know how to change that because she never got what she wanted. So she's basically, when, in order to get what she wants out of it, she will control the dynamics of the, of the household because it's like dealing with a small child, an adult body who has never got what she wanted. And I think my grandmother was the same way too. Her mother was the same way too. So whatever the case may be, the only way out is through. Go through the dark tunnels. Anyway, someone's calling me. Sorry about that. So yes, um, I hope this video helps for those of you who are watching. I know that I maybe said a lot of things, but I just hope my message does come across as is what I really wanna do is share my message with you. While a lot of our firstborns often see the things and we know so much is because the fact that we've been through a lot more than the younger children and siblings have gone through. And we have seen a lot more and we understand that what we went through was not healthy and um, we may be called crazy we may be called um, so many different things because even the younger child is also like the puppet on the string to the parent and they have their own issues they're not dealing with and we had to really understand the nature and we weren't really um, we, we feel like as though it's just, we, we just, we see things, we just never understood things. And I talked, and like, I don't know how to describe it, but I also talked to another person who is a firstborn. He felt like that she was, she felt as though like she was the psychologist at her friend's group. I was like, I'm the same way too. Like, I relate, relate to her. I met her through uh, my uh, friend of mine's, it's my friend of mine's daughter, and she's firstborn. And I get on like, yeah, you are, like, I understand that. Like, I'm the same thing. Like, it's like we have to take, we take on, like, the worst characteristics of our parents. And then we project it out there, and we don't like it. Because the fact that we didn't know anything better. We just knew what we, what we saw. And then, then we just use that to survive and, uh, and use that as our coping mechanism. And younger children see what they do. They see what the firstborns, and then they try not to do the same thing. Because they don't want the same punishment as the firstborn got. I get it. So I talked to her about that. It was a friend of mine's daughter's friend that I was talking to. And I was just like, yep, that is pretty much it. And she's like, yeah, I really like that. Like, yeah, so I totally get that because I'm the firstborn too. And I totally get to understand that. And a friend of mine, he's a lot older than me, but he, it's like, he, he's a firstborn too. So he saw the same thing too. I'm like, firstborns, I like their mothers. And I'm like starting to see patterns and traits of that. And it's not easy to handle. It's not easy to go through, but I, I've seen that with firstborns or only children. 
because we are so attached to our mothers because we just we did not know who where else to get the nourishment from the encouragement from or the nurturing from so that's what we've learned so first points <laughs> we are very funny people i guess anyways um i'm gonna go hope this video helps subscribe to my channel if you find these videos helpful if you wish to get into more in touch with me you can go to my website my website link is down below as well uh, i'm gonna have to change my website around too because i have to rearrange a lot of things but i hope this video helps and i will talk to you guys real soon have a great day guys